Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. This week, we continue our summer quarter of Sunday School lessons. The summer quarter looks at expressions of Christian hope, both in this present age and in the glorious future that God is preparing for us. This week, we continue our study in Unit 2, Expressing Hope, which turns attention to the prayers of ancient Israel as a model for offering to God our praise and petitions. These Hebrew prayers are also expressions of Christian hope. This is the last lesson of the unit drawn from the Psalms. Get your Sunday School book. Bible, notepad, pen, or device, and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson. Now let's get started with this wonderful lesson. The lesson title for this week, July the 28th, is God Redeems Us. And this is the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday School commentary is Expectant Watchfulness. The background scripture is Psalm 130. And the print passage is Psalm 130, verses 1 through 8. The key verse in this week's lesson is, Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. And that's Psalm 130, verse 7, the New International Version. Here are three questions to consider and reflect on. As we go through this week's lesson, question number one, what did the psalmist cry out for God to do? Question number two, what are we to do when we sin? Question number three, what does the psalmist say about God's goodness and mercy? Let's take a brief look at the lesson biblical context. This week's lesson continues in the book of Psalms, Psalms 130. The Psalms are an ancient Jewish songbook that contains songs, it contains poems and prayers that express the worship, the emotions and faith of God's people. The Psalms cover various themes of hymns such as praise, lament, thanksgiving, wisdom and prophecy. Psalm 130 is a lament that calls out to God from the depths of human suffering expressing confidence that God will hear and respond to every cry of pain. The psalm speaks of redemption from all sin through Jesus Christ. The background for Psalm 130 is unknown. We can only tell that the writer was in deep, deep sorrow for a sin he had committed. He did not identify the cause of the despair that prompted his cry for God's forgiveness. This passage of scripture is about God's forgiveness of our sins and not just forgiveness, but the assurance of his forgiveness if we confess our sins to him. Psalm 130 is called a penitential psalm. Penitential means showing or displaying sorrow and regret for having done something wrong. Psalm 130 is one of seven psalms in the Bible of this type that were incorporated into early church worship and used as confessions of sin and repentance. The other Psalms are number 6, 32, 38, 51, 102, and 143. These Psalms just mentioned highlight the necessity of relying on God, the source of grace and comfort. David is identified author of four of these Psalms, Psalm 6, 32, 51, and 143. Structurally, each of these psalms follows a similar format, a cry for help amid adversity, a description of the adversity, and a request for God's help. In each of them, the author confesses or acknowledges his sin before God, 
and recognizes the need for his grace and forgiveness. The best known of this group of Psalms is Psalm 51, David's prayer of repentance. After Psalm 51, Psalm 130 is the second most well-known Psalm. The unnamed author does not identify a particular affliction again, but expresses his awareness of his sinfulness and the need for forgiveness. In each of these Psalms, the psalmist confesses or acknowledges his sin before God and recognizes the need for his grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Psalm 130 is unique for two additional reasons. First, its closing verses identify it as a national prayer for repentance. Second, it is also categorized among the pilgrimage psalms and the songs of ancients sung by Jewish pilgrims traveling to Jerusalem for the God-mandated annual feast. Although these psalms were composed for situations and transgressions that their authors experienced, they are relevant examples of individuals' need for repentance, reconciliation, and restoration to a right relationship with God. Psalm 130 expresses the psalmist's awareness of his sinfulness and need for God's grace. The psalmist called out to God from his innermost being, expressing the depth of his suffering and longing for God to hear his cry for help. Today's lesson will continue focusing on prayers as an expression of Christian hope. The lesson aims for this week's lesson are explore connections between God's hearing, forgiveness, and being revered. Lesson aim number two, develop confidence in God's steadfast love and desire to forgive. And lesson aim number three, express assurance in God's redemptive power. As we continue our glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are two outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book. The first lesson outline is confidence of forgiveness, and that's Psalm 130 verses 1 through 4. And the second lesson outline is hope for redemption, and that's Psalm 130 verses 5 through 8. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, confidence of forgiveness. Verse 1, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Out of the depths, I cry to you, Lord. Verse 2, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. Key point one, in the depths of despair, the psalmist cried out to God. He is saying, Lord, hear me. Help me, Lord. The psalmist cried out to God for his mercy in the midst of his affliction. The psalmist pleaded mercifully to God with the confidence that he knew that God would hear him and forgive him. He pleaded, let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. The psalmist did not specify the nature of the consequences of his sin, but urgently prayed. He prayed urgently out of severe distress, out of the depths. Again, he prayed for God's mercy, forgiveness, and redemption. He had confident hope that God would hear and respond. The psalmist's cry for help was not related to the forgiveness necessary for salvation, but to the experience of deep suffering because of some undisclosed sin. Verse 3, if you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? Verse 4, but with you there is forgiveness so that we can, with reverence, serve you. God doesn't keep a record of our sins. When he forgives, he forgives completely. 
every living soul is born with a sinful nature inherited from Adam. We all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Inevitably, we all sin, whether through commission or by omission. What's important is how we respond to our sins. Psalm 130 is an excellent example of how we should respond to having committed sins against God. When we sin, if we come to God humbly and repent, we can be confident that he will keep his promise to forgive our sins. Years of previous relationship with God had taught the psalmist that there is, in fact, forgiveness with God. When we are hit hard with our awareness of sin, it can be hard to believe, but it is true. There is forgiveness with God. Key point number two, without forgiveness, no one is delivered from sin's consequences. When we sin, Again, if we come to God humbly and repent, we can be confident that he will keep his promise to forgive our sins. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 reads, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgiveness, which believers find in Christ, releases them from God's penalty for sin, clearing all charges and canceling the debt of sin's penalty. It is wonderful to know that God graciously promises to cast our sins and carry them as far as east is from west. Psalm 103 verses 12 through 14 reads, beginning with verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Verse 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Verse 14. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. By faith in Jesus Christ, individuals acknowledge being a sinner repent of their sins, and accept Christ as their Savior. God, in turn, erases their sinful nature, our sinful nature, regarding them as if they never sinned. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 17 reads, Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. John chapter 3, verse 3 reads, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We are prone to sin by nature. To remain in fellowship with God, believers must seek forgiveness for any committed sin or neglected act of obedience. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 reads, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Those who enjoy a relationship with God can rejoice that God forgives and forgets our sins. Although we fall short of God's standards, and God forgives us for our sins. Yet, God expects those he has forgiven to live a consecrated life, separate and distinct from the world. God expects from believers commitment, holiness, in conversation and in conduct. The second lesson outline, hope for redemption. Verse 5 reads, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. Verse 6, I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. After he prayed for forgiveness, the psalmist waited. 
He eagerly, yet patiently waiting, knowing that God would redeem him because his hope was in God's word and in God's promises. God had always come through for him. The scripture says, he watches diligently for the Lord, not knowing when he would come, but watching, knowing that the help God promised would come. He describes his expectant waiting as watchmen, looking forward to the morning when they would be relieved from their guard duties. The psalmist expressed strong confidence that God would hear and redeem him because of his steadfast mercy. He expressed his trust in God. Key point number one, God hears the cry of his children, meets them in the depth of their pain, and accompanies them in and through it. In verses seven and eight, the psalmist is speaking to the people of God. Verse seven, Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. The psalmist encourages the nation to put their hope in God because of his unfailing love for them. This is an encouragement to us to put our hope and trust in God. Verse 8, he himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. The psalmist offers a message of hope and assurance. The psalmist prayed for Israel to have hope in God so that she could be redeemed of her sins. Verse 8 is a message of assurance that Israel can have complete and total confidence in God's keeping his word. Key point two, God never fails. He keeps his word. The psalmist from his own experiences sought to persuade the afflicted people of God to put their trust in God in whom he had himself hoped. From the depths of affliction, guilt, and almost despair, the psalmist had looked to the Lord who listened to his cry. The psalmist encouraged the nation to put their hope in God and depend on his divine mercy for a complete redemption from all her sins. By his interactions with God, The psalmist now entreats the people of God everywhere and always in like manner to trust God. God is still the God who forgives because his steadfast love never ceases. His constant mercies are renewed daily. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7 reads, Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. God is a redemptive God, as seen in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1, that reads, God declares, but now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. In summary, this lesson focused on God's faithfulness in forgiving and restoring those who confess and repent of sin. The words of Psalm 130 can be an offering of assurance of God's endless mercy and forgiveness. When we fall short of God's standards, we can be confident that he is willing to forgive our sins and no longer hold them against us. As believers, we must consistently examine our lives to identify where we may have missed the mark and require God's forgiveness. It is vital that we cry out to God continually, asking the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and our thoughts to reveal any sin that will potentially disrupt our fellowship with God. When the Holy Spirit reveals our sins and convicts us, we must confess them, believing that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, as noted in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 
There is a song written by Thomas A. Dorsey that says, Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Turn the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten in me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I got to be whole. He goes on to say, search me, touch me, cleanse me through and through. Well, you know all my faults. If there is something bad that I am not aware of, well, take it, move it, keep me in your care. Oh, search me, Lord, search me. Lord, turn the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and straighten in me. I want to be right. I've got to be saved. I want to be whole. Our closing thought and question. God is a God of mercy and forgiveness. God's gracious forgiveness of our sins is to be the measure of our gracious forgiveness of others. Question. As you reflect on how freely and undeservingly God forgave and continues to forgive you, is there someone you need to forgive this week? In closing, thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's Sunday School Lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to study and teach God's Word. Don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.